Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Better though, is your host. Thank you so kind of being part of the show. Where are all my peeps? Where are all my peeps? I guess it's the weekend before Christmas, so people are taking it easy. Well, here we go. Bruce Pollard said he's baking cookies on solar power. So proud of you, Bruce. You bake on solar power, brother. Eric Hayes is in the house. Bridge MCP is in the house. Michael Rodney says, did you happen to get the video I sent you to be prepped? I'm so embarrassed. I forgot. I am so sorry, Radnin. I have to. Re- uh, I, I, I will. I, I, I will look into that. Se- could you do me a favor? Send another message in the same tweet so that it gives me an alarm. I don't know how I forgot that. I'm so sorry. Uh, Melanie Keelan says, "Happy Friday to everyone." Yes, let, let's do that. Let's do it for Monday. But go ahead, and send me an email so that I get an attention, please. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, Lee Grant is in the house. We also have. Yvette Avery Herod, how you doing, Yvette? Great to see you here, as well as uh, Michael Rudnan, I called out already. But we're just starting to ramp up. With emails haven't gone out automatically yet, I don't think. I'm looking down here, and apparently they haven't been queued yet, so we may be a while before we get some people in. Anyway, great to see you all. I trust that you're all going to have a happy, 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 merry, merry, merry Christmas. Thank you for that, Rodney. I have it. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and get that done. All right. I, I want to play a few videos that I missed yesterday because we kind of ran out of time. So I want to do it early on. You know, Ali Velshi a few days ago pointed out something. Everybody wants to know how badly are they, they are stating how badly uh, Rudy Giuliani has fallen. And he wants to remind us of something. This is who Rudy Giuliani has always been. It's just now that we got a chance to exercise his, his, his bad side in public beyond that 9-11 false mystique. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, and then we'll take it on the other side. Giuliani rode that wave of goodwill as far as he could. His lawyer even alluded to it in court this week, pleading with the jury that his client is, quote, a man who did great things. But the legend of Rudy Giuliani often covers up the reality of the man that the director of the New York Civil Liberties Union once called, quote, an authoritarian anti-democratic bully. His reputation as a tough on crime mayor who cleaned up New York City is often inflated and inaccurate. Historians point out the crime in New York began trending downward in the mid 1980s during Ed Koch's tenure, which continued during David Dinkins time as mayor in the early 1990s before Rudy Giuliani became mayor. But it is true that Giuliani was tough on crime. He ordered the NYPD to crack down on low-level offenses. And Giuliani's time as mayor is closely linked to the rise of the stop-and-frisk policy, which eventually was deemed unconstitutional as it was applied in New York because of how disproportionately it singled out young Black and Hispanic men. Giuliani's insensitive response to the killings of unarmed Black men like Amadou Diallo and Patrick Dorismond by NYPD officers in the late 1990s further enraged the Black community. And if you view Giuliani through this more comprehensive lens of his life and career, then it isn't so confounding how or why America's mayor could be so egregiously wrong about jumping to conclusions that a pair of black women working late at an election site were passing around a USB flash drive like it was, quote, vials of heroin or cocaine. Rudy Giuliani is the same man he's always been. Now he's just broke, desperate and can't pay for publicity anymore. Now he's just broke and can't pay for publicity anymore. So yes, that is always who Giuliani has been. He's always been a crook. He's always been a racist. He's always been all those isms that we talk about. That is who he is. Too often, we apply praises to these guys or we give them a second chance or we go ahead and, and forget about all the bad things that he did. Anyway, kudos to Ali Velshi for reminding us who this guy is and not falling for any of the crap. All right, let's see. Michael Rudin says, Rudy Giuliani promoted the broken windows philosophy, which never worked, harshly punished minor crimes in an attempt to prevent major crimes, Broken windows was never an effective strategy. 
If you want to lower crime rates, elevate people out of poverty as the desperation that comes from poverty is the leading cause of crime. You nailed it. Unlike Mike Sisak, who says the young black men were the ones in gang wars shooting each other back then. Yeah. Why? Ask yourself the question. Why? The one thing Rudy is not is a racist. Of course he's a racist. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there, 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 there are points where he's been using the, well, again, I, I won't go into that with you. Lee Grant says, don't forget the innocent Israelis who may still be in hostages of a brutal people. Well, I, I guess the, the brutality of, uh, of the IDF is no less than the brutality of Hamas. And we have a special guest today that I hope you listen to, my brother Lee Grant. Because this special guest is going to have a lot to say. But before we get to the special guest, I want to remind you the caliber of people. I want to remind you the caliber of people that would follow somebody like this president that some actually believe they should vote for. Let's take a listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Trump continues to use fascist language that dehumanizes immigrants. Here's what he said last night in Iowa. We have no idea who any of them are. They come from Africa. They come from Asia. They come from South America. And it's true. They're destroying the blood of our country. That's what they're doing. They're destroying our country. They don't like it when I said that. And I never read Mein Kampf. They said, oh, Hitler said that in a much different way. You know, they're coming from all over the world, people all over the world. We have no idea. They could be healthy. They could be very unhealthy. They could bring in disease that's going to catch on in our country. But they do bring in crime. But they have them coming from all over the world. And they're destroying the blood of our country. They're destroying the fabric of our country. And we're going to have to get them out. You know, um, Mike Barnacle, just um, it, it's always uh, I've always found it uh, well, just absolutely uh, surprising that whenever you would bring up comparisons, not you, when I would bring up or other people bring up comparisons with what Donald Trump said and what fascist leaders in the past have said, you know, everybody uh, with their white gloves uh, trying to. I don't know, trying to play by a different set of rules. Oh, you can't you can't talk about that. You can't bring up the fact that Donald Trump talks like a fascist or Mussolini. So let's remember those who are voting for Donald Trump, those who support Donald Trump. Indirectly, you see what they're supporting. They are, in fact, supporting uh, the wish that our country move on to just what Hitler created back in the late 30s, early 40s. But here's the thing about it. There are more of us than those. And what we have to ensure is that in the states where we can get undemocratic results because of this thing called the Electoral College, that we go ahead and overperform in those areas. That is what we have to do. That is what we must do. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver. Uh, Melanie Keelan is in the house. How you doing, Melanie Keelan? Great to see you here, my dear lady from Barcelona, Spain. All right, let's see what else we got here. Mike Seasack, I'm not even going to touch the stuff about rockets because all I have to say is one thing. Let's look at Tel Aviv. Let's look at Haifa. Let's look at Jerusalem. Let's look at all these places. You said a thousand rockets were shipped off by Hamas, Hamas a terrorist organization. But let's look at what was decimated, what killed people. The IDF goes into Israel and decimated. And what they ask you to do, all these spokesmen, and yeah, spokesmen mostly, one spokeswoman that I've seen thus far, they come in from Israel and come on our national TV. They use APAC to lie to you. They come and lie on our TV, and even as they're presented with the evidence, with the truth, they say, oh, no, that really didn't happen. Your eyes are lying to you. Mark Regev, one of the biggest lying, uh, uh, genocidal spokespeople for the IDF, just came on on TV a, a day ago 
And this is what, actually, I think this one was today. And here's what he had to say. We show him the bombs fallen. We show him the dead bodies of people being extracted out of the bombs that our American bombs dropped by Israeli fighters onto a building, killing innocent civilians. And he wants you to think that, oh, it's okay. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Now, I do want to play some more of that Sky News reporting from inside Rafa. And this was moments after an Israeli strike. There are screams of desperation and the sounds of sirens as the Israeli drone circles overhead with the threat of more incoming missiles. There are women underneath here, one man shouts. The body of a dead child is found and taken away on a stretcher. We don't know why the Israeli military hit this target, but people in Gaza had been told that Rafa was safe. Now, the question is, Rafa was supposed to be a safe area. It's in the south. And it was right outside a hospital where that took place. Our our Sky News correspondent was right there. So this is not anecdotal. Um, So Israel... Israel's been, uh, oh, let's just put it this way. You've had Jake Sullivan, you've had you know, Defense Secretary Austin, you've had Tony Blinken all very publicly and the President of the United States saying that Israel has to do a better job of targeting and of trying to minimize the casualties. Um, does, isn't this an example of that not, not taking place? So I understand this is an example of that exactly taking place. There was a target of opportunity in Rafa, a senior Hamas commander. We surgically strike the building where he was. um, And he, of course, was next to a hospital because that's how Hamas work. They always try to embed themselves using the civilians and humanitarian sites like hospitals, schools, uh, mosques and so forth as a shield for their military machine. I understand there was no damage to the hospital. We hit the target we wanted to hit. Of course, because Hamas is an authoritarian uh, ruler, a, a brutal ruler, and no one can say to the cameras anything but the Hamas line, yes? But my understanding was this was a surgical strike against a terrorist commander, uh, and uh, there was no little... In fact, if you look at the smoke that I can see now on the screen, you see it's a very specific strike against a specific location. Uh, this is not some sort of indiscriminate targeting of civilians, far from it. Don't believe your eyes. Please don't believe your eyes. Don't believe that all those dead, innocent civilians were being extracted out of that surgical strike. So let's assume he is partially telling the truth when we know most of what comes out of their their pipes are lies. Let's assume it is partially true. If you know there are civilians in that building, not because you know for sure that a terrorist is in that building and a hundred other people in that building, do you decimate that building? Do you bomb that building to get that one terrorist? You have drones. You wait till the guy vacates the building. You wait till he does something. You wait till he goes into a tunnel and you send the people who are there, the, the soldiers, to destroy him so that you don't have innocent casualties, innocent deaths. But no, you see, when you don't think the value of life of others matter, then to get to that criminal, you will kill everybody around it because you don't think their lives have value. It's the same thing George Bush one did in Panama. He didn't think the lives of those people that live in Chorillo the lives of those people who lived in Cologne had any value. So he just blew stuff up. So it killed a few people. Hey, who cares? It killed a few Panamanians. Who cares? Uh, Israel killed a whole ton of uh, to over 20,000 Palestinians. Who cares? After all, they killed 1,200 Israelis. So we just go ahead and decimate these people. Well, I want you guys to listen to my brother here, Norman Solomon. because Norman who is Jewish. Well, before I go to Norman, let me go ahead and read this. Hamas leader visits Egypt amid intensive talks on ceasefire. How? Uh, I'll read that afterwards. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Uh, 
Daniel, Daniel Ledo, dead Palestinians, it's a price to be paid for Palestinians allowing Hamas to fester for decades, for allowing their babies to be indoctrinated into murderous ideology. Who is a murderous ideology? Let's look at all the people killed since 1948. I want you guys to do, and anybody can do this analysis. Look at who was killed during 19, since 1948. Okay? You have Palestinians and you have Jews, both my brothers and sisters. Let's add up all these numbers. Don't tell me that you just have a whole bunch of killers just while killing people. Again, numbers don't lie. They don't lie. Down buildings don't lie. The difference between, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> CSAC just shows a picture with a whole lot of these man-made, these, these uh, minute missiles taken off into Israel. And he says, look, look, look at their shooting missiles in Israel. Yeah, they shoot, they, they shoot a 10, 10 uh, K uh, missile and Israel comes back with a 2,000 pound bomb or a 500 pound bomb, right? And kill a whole bunch of people. Again, folks, your morality should be questioned if you look at if you can sleep at night thinking that all is well in uh, if all is well, something is wrong with you. Michael says Hamas terrorists are hiding among civilians. Less, yes, we know this. However, you can't go around indiscriminately killing the civilians alongside the terrorists. Don't become worse uh, horror than you're uh, trying to remove. Of course, what you do is you wait. That's what we do when, when police go into certain communities. In others, of course, they blow you away. Like in Panama, they just blow you away. I remember I hadn't heard after the invasion of Panama. I hadn't heard from my father in a very long time uh, when they invaded Panama. When I heard from him and I had to hear the story of him being in Arco Iris, Rainbow City, the, the town that uh, I went to school in. And he's talking about the, I guess it was Apache or one of those helicopters staying over near over his building and shooting the missiles into Colón. It's like, wow, the Cuartel Nacional is like three miles away from that in a straight line. Why would they be over in, in Arco Iris doing that? They didn't care. They didn't care that some of them was going to kill innocent people. Right? So don't tell me about morality when it comes to neither our military or, or the IDF. I don't want to hear about morality. I want us to learn some morality. Anyway, let's let's listen to my good friend here, Norman Solomon, and listen to what he has to say. I had an interview with him this morning, and I wanted to get it out to you guys right away. So here we go. Here goes the interview. Welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. Today, we are honored once again to have uh, Norman Solomon. Norman Solomon is a an American journalist, activist, media critic, and the co-founder and national coordinator of RootsAction.org. He is the author of War Made Easy and is a longtime associate of fear, uh, fairness and accuracy in reporting. His a new book, or it's not new anymore, but it's an important book, War Made Invisible, How America Hides the Human Toll of Its Military Machine. And it's amazing with all that's going on right now, how prescient that book is. Uh, Senor Norman Solomon, welcome once again to Politics Done Right. Thanks so much, Egberto. Let me tell you, uh, Norman, I've been going through some of your work at Common Dream. I know that you write in other places. So for those who don't, uh, don't read Common Dreams, tell us the other places where your essays appear, please. Well, they're on um, antiwar.com. They're LA Progressive, uh, Salon, and elsewhere. And you can always find it at my website, normansolomon.com. Excellent. Um, uh, before we we start this uh, this new conversation, I want to address something um, because the subject when we're talking about Israel and war and Hamas, it is difficult in that those who aren't Jewish trying to talk about the subject, they have to be very careful. Yours truly, I'm a humanist. I'm very careful to make sure that I don't cross into a line that in as much as I am not an anti-Semitic person, that it doesn't come across either as anti-Semitic. So I usually pass most of what I talk about on this subject to my Jewish friends. You are one of my Jewish friends. So beforehand, please tell me a little bit about yourself, 
and your religion, etc. so that we can get this discussion in the right context. I grew up uh, mostly in the Washington, D.C. suburbs, and Judaism was part of our household. And I also, as a child, learned a lot about the Holocaust and was frightened as a young boy to read the stories and see films about the Nazis and the stormtroopers. I feel that I understand a lot of the fears and the worries and the anger that Israelis and Jews elsewhere in the world are feeling right now. Great. I, I am glad to do that. So let's get into the discussion. First of all, I want to give you a big thank you because there are not a lot of people that are brave enough to do what you're doing uh, on Common Dreams. Uh, you have articles, and I, I want to name out some of these articles' titles, and then we'll discuss the, the guts later on. But Israel's 9-11 is a slogan to rationalize open-ended massacre of Palestinian civilians. Hamas is a terrorist organization. So is the Israeli government provocative. Uh, Biden is a genocide denier and the enabler in chief of Israel's ongoing war crimes. Could not have been said more clearly. Uh, the U.S. and Israel agree it's OK to kill thousands of children. What you see on TV, folks, your eyes are not lying to you. Don't let anybody tell you that. Uh, ghoulish euphemism, poetry and the nightmare of Gaza. Let me tell you, it takes a special person, a bold person to be able to write that and put that out here, given so much of the blowback that APEC and many other organizations are doing against anybody who attempts to be rational, pragmatic and truthful. You say. The blowback is intended to make people be quiet to, as you say, not believe their own eyes, to refuse to be rational, and to refuse to have a single standard of human rights. And Egberto, I really feel that that's key. If we have a single standard of human rights in this country of the United States and looking at events elsewhere in the world, then we have a moral compass. We won't get lost in ideology, propaganda, and just the jumbling of standards that so often happens when people, for instance, tint their window on the world red, white, and blue, and perhaps unconsciously feel that some people's lives are more important than others. The objectification of those who are either omitted from the U.S. media screen or put in very fuzzy focus so that we don't really understand or have conveyed to us their humanity, that's a system that really discounts the humanity of certain people on the planet. We know where that leads. When we discount the humanity of some people because of their race, religion, ethnicity, the language they speak, the culture they have, that's how atrocities can be sustained. And I, I think that, that, that this is a clear example. Um, help me here, please. Uh, 1,200 or so innocent Jewish brothers and sisters were massacred by the terrorist organization Hamas. Subsequently, over 20,000 plus Palestinians, more than half or half or so of them, children. Uh, infrastructure decimated, people forcefully starved, people forcefully left without water. Uh, Norman, please explain to me how our media can present those two stories, which they are accurately presenting. They're presenting the suffering of the Palestinians. But the narrative, it seems to me, is missing. The narrative is missing because of a lot of the buzzwords and the way that the window on these events is tinted. And so we hear the word terrorist applied to Hamas, which I think is, is absolutely appropriate. They engaged in terroristic activities. Most of those who were killed on October 7th were civilians. But the word is used so selectively because by any consistent standard, the Israeli government since October 7th has been engaged in massive terrorism and mass murder in Gaza. 
So to step away from that and to avoid that reality is to dodge a s- essential human question. Do we justify somehow the massacre of civilians for, and then fill in the blank, you know, any number of conscious or unconscious reasons? We, as you refer to, are living in a moment as we have for, wow, more than two months now where according to the top official director general of the World Health Organization, there have been 10 children killed in Gaza on average every hour. This should be completely (laughs) intolerable. It's so outrageous and really echoes some of the horrors that we know about in studying history and to compound this crime against humanity or to enable it. Unfortunately, the U.S. government is a participant in that mass murder by shipping weapons as the murder is taking place to reinforce the Israeli military by vetoing ceasefire resolutions in the U.N. Security Council. This is a time when Unfortunately, we're learning more about the character of those who are running the U.S. government at the very top. And it's not only outrageous, but it must inform our future attitude and organizing so that we can turn these atrocities around and stop them. You know, I want to use your own words against you. And this, this is your article. Hamas is a terrorist organization. So is Israeli government. And you couldn't have said it any better. I want to read this to you, my friend. A single standard of language should accompany a consistent standard of human rights, which the world desperately needs. If thoughts corrupts language, George Orwell wrote, language can also corrupt thought. A bad usage can spread by tradition and imitation, even among people who should and do know better. No amount of rhetoric from its defenders and apologists can change the reality that Hamas engaged in mass murder. What Hamas horrifically did to more than a thousand Israeli civilians of all ages uh, uh, two weeks ago, which is when you wrote this, meets the dictionary definition of terrorism. And no amount of rhetoric can change the reality that the Israeli government has engaged in mass murder during the last two weeks. What Israel's military is horrifically doing in Gaza, already killing several thousand Palestinian civilians of all ages, also meets the definition of terrorism. And my brother, that was two weeks after it started. It is now from a few thousand to over 20,000, you say. It really is a challenge to our own humanity, our capacity to organize effectively in this country, and at the very basis, truth-telling. Daniel Ellsberg passed away uh, this summer, and one of the profound lessons of his life, beginning with the release of the Pentagon Papers, was and remains that silence is complicity. During the 1980s, when there was the launch of ACT UP and AIDS activists, there was the saying, silence equals death. And it's true. We enable our government to continue a policy of inflicting through, in this case, the Israeli government, inflicting death on civilians to the extent that we're silent. And unfortunately, there is still a lot of silence one way or another. So I feel that this discussion today is part of the process of breaking the silence so we can have a better kind of policy and a better country and find a way to sustain life instead of destroying it. You know, APAC is on, if you you watch cable TV, if you watch network TV, you'll start seeing APAC doing some very clever messaging in which they include that Hamas are the terrorists. We Israelis are doing the right thing and we are there to protect Palestinians as well. While 
it, they're getting decimated. How do we, how do we counter that kind of a budget uh, when what they're doing it with these ads as well is making people that are truth tellers like yourself seem like you're out of step? You're right. It's very clever messaging. And it's an echo, and I think decoding it is part of the process. It's an echo of what we heard beginning with 9-11 in response to that crime against humanity to try to justify what followed, which was in 22 years since then, under the name of the so-called War on Terror, as the Brown University Cost of War Project has documented, directly killing more than 400,000 civilians under the name of the anti-terrorism war and indirectly uh, killing a total of 4.5 million people in many countries under that uh, rubric. Right after 9-11, the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, said as the U.S. was engaged in its follow-up to invasion of Afghanistan, we're talking very late, 2001, Rumsfeld said, let's be clear, every American, every civilian in Afghanistan is dying because of Al-Qaeda. And so it was a step of past, present, and future self-absolution. Uh, uh, no matter what we do, no matter how many civilians we kill, we have no culpability whatsoever. It's all the fault of Al-Qaeda because of what they did on 9-11. Very similar to the messaging we're getting from AIPAC, from the Israeli government, from apologists for the Israeli government right now. So whatever we do, they always want to change the subject back to what Hamas did. You know, former ambassador to Israel, to I think to, I mean, uh, Israel ambassador, I think it's to the UK, Mark Regev. He is one of the major spokespeople on, uh, on MSNBC, NBC, and all over the networks. And he's great at doing exactly what you just said. Uh, we killed, we, we, we send blind bombs. We, we, have, we have videos that show blind bombs falling out of the sky, just decimating neighborhoods. And when they ask him about it, he says, all of that could stop today if Hamas just returned the hostages and surrender. Yeah. And that's the end of the discussion. Yes, very much. And U.S. spokespeople, notably, for instance, John Kirby from the National Security Council, speaks in very similar terms, changing the subject back to Hamas as though history ended on October 7th and really as though history began on October 7th. The years, now the decades of treating more than two million human beings in Gaza like prisoners in what Noam Chomsky has called the biggest open air prison in the world mm -hmm. to subject people the slow death for many in the confinement of the de facto occupation of Gaza uh, by the Israeli government with U.S. help. And yet you have people like John Kirby and others, including uh, Biden and Harris at the top mm -hmm. of the administration and bipartisan on Capitol Hill, Democrats and Republicans, saying that this is all the fault of Hamas. And even now, as you noted, Egberto, we have 20,000 people, human beings, souls extinguished, just as precious as those. If you go to the mall in Houston or San Francisco or New York or anywhere else, you're seeing people who are just as innocent as those who have been slaughtered courtesy of U.S. taxpayers and Israeli taxpayers. And that is the human reality that continues as we speak. A few days ago, Hakeem Jeffries gave a speech, a, a, a huge speech, and where he, he just came in the complete defense of Israel. It was, it was pretty embarrassing because it seems to me that he, he lowered himself, he lowered his his, his moral standards such that for so much that needs to be done later, it'll come back to haunt him. Because I feel going forward, while it may not happen right now, what we are doing in along with Israel right now 
I think it's going to come back to haunt us. So what I want to ask you, Norman, is give me a wrap up in the form that tells me where do you think we go from here? Where should we go or how best to accomplish what both both of us know needs to be accomplished with this story? I think of it as tending a healthy garden that first grows uh, from very uh, small seeds and through the time of thinking and nurturing and working together, this wondrous garden can be created. And that requires many different aspects, you know, the, the soil, the plants, the rain, the sunshine. That's true of building social movements for humanism instead of the kind of barbarism that we're seeing uh, coming from Israel with U.S. government support. So I think a program like this must be supported, politics done right. The kind of media outlets that are progressive, that have a single standard of human rights online, they need to be supported. Our voices need to be heard, not suppressed by ourselves. For one thing, we should not engage in self-censorship out of fear. We should speak out. We should write letters to the editor. We should write articles. We should speak to friends and neighbors, people in our union or in our school, our professional organization, whatever it might be and speak out and pressure members of Congress. There are 535 people in the House and Senate. They should hear from us directly. And if we don't get satisfaction, we should be willing to have meetings and nonviolently and militantly confront them. As Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of, he referred to the marvelous new militancy of the civil rights movement of that era. And today we need marvelous new militancy, nonviolent and direct, confrontive, to say to members of Congress, when you are voting for and refusing to challenge this mass murder by the Israeli government, supported by the U.S. government, we call you to account. You work for us. We are constituents. We will not be silent. And through all of that, we need to organize for political power. Norman, you put your your work where your words are common dreams and all the other places that you write the articles that you write that are that it it holds back no punches as it shouldn't uh, it's doing exactly as it should i want to thank you first of all for appearing here in politics and right i want to thank you for your work folks this is norman solomon american journalist activist and one who knows of what he speaks thank you so kindly for having been on politics and right Thank you so much, Alberto. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us, please join. You know, going forward, I will be posting the articles that um, that Norman Solomon normally sends out to LA Progressive, Common Dreams, etc. Because I, I think we 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 have to keep, we have to give this message, we have to give truth. We have to give morality as wide a disbursement as possible. Because I tell you, folks, um, I look, I, I listen to my my friends here, my right wingers here, and I, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I don't understand how you can be so gullible to the words of those who are doing such evil. I, I, I don't get it. When Mike Cisak says 15,000 people of those 20,000 plus people are the, the, the people who are, are the Hamas fighters, I mean, there's direct evidence that proves that a complete lie. But somehow, to, to, to make yourself feel moral among this vast immorality, 
You convince yourself of that. I repeat what I, I started speaking about in the last few days. Ignorance is okay. Ignorance is okay. Willful ignorance is unforgivable. Willful ignorance is unforgivable. I want you guys to, 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 to note that. And, you know, uh, it, it is just shameful. Anyway, folks, um, uh, the t- you can give me a call if you anybody want to talk. 281-823-7747. 281-823-7747. I decided to go through all of my videos as fast as I could because I wanted to get them played. I don't have uh, any more videos for the day. Uh, the rest of the subject is on you. If you want to uh, put some messages in there for us to continue or else I can go on a soliloquy for 10 minutes. I'd rather not. I'd love to answer. Quite. Let, let me go through and see if there's some things that I haven't read yet. Uh, let's see. Both Hamas and uh, from, from uh, Radnin, both Hamas and Israel have committed war crimes. Hamas with the targeting of civilians on October 7, including rapes. Israel for the massive amount of preventable collateral damage resulting in over 20,000 and counting deaths. I tell you what, uh, you know, I want to address that, Rudnan. We could earlier on say that a lot of this was collateral damage, right? But after listening to the people inside of Israel, to what the right-wingers are saying inside of Israel, I don't think it is fair for us to call this collateral damage. This is willful murder. This is willful murder. This is leave this place inhabitable such that people will either leave or more easily dominated. This was an opportunity to do what they wanted to do. And it's not at all Un- inconceivable that it was hoped that this would occur. After all, a lot of those people that lived along that border were progressives who wanted to find some sort of a, a, a way to live together with uh, the Palestinian, uh, with, with Gaza. So if you notice, there wasn't much security for these people. How long security took to, to come to them is suspect. We also know that, and all of this is documented, we also know that Netanyahu worked with, I think it's Qatar or, or UAE, one of the, these places, to ensure that Hamas stayed funded so that they will remain viable as an opposition to the Palestinian Authority to prevent sub, a subsequent Palestinian state. So we know all of this happened, and, and these are documented with evidence that we, we have that's not and and with stuff that isn't denied. So, yes, both sides have committed atrocities. You're correct, Radnin, but please don't call what Israel is doing now collateral damage. This is beyond collateral damage. This is intentional murder. I mean, you take a look at the bombing that that uh, Mark Regev comes on TV and says, "Yeah, that was a surgical strike. A surgical strike." That took out maybe one Palestinian uh, got one, one uh, Palestinian terrorist and a hundred or fifty or however many innocent civilians. Let's let's be honest, folks. Let's be honest. Uh, but he says he's a great. Thanks, Egberto. Yeah, he's a great guy to speak to. I have I have so many people to speak to over the next few weeks, not only on the Israel subjects but on on, on many other economics, etc. Um, and we're going to do it. We are going to start. Uh, we want to start the 2024 year ready to go because we have a very important election coming out. And we have to really educate those who are educatable, if you will. That's myself. I consider myself educatable. I consider folks like my sister, Bridge MCP, Yvette Avery Herod, educatable. We are all educatable. But there are some of us who have used our own prejudices uh, to become willfully ignorant. And again, I, there's not much we can do about you. There's not much we can do about you. All right. Uh, Michael Rodney says 70% of Gaza's dead were women and children under 18. That alone eliminates the possibility that uh, of, of, of 15,000 being 
Hamas killers, right? So let's be clear here. Uh, let's be clear here. Uh, let's let's see now. Uh, para ver, para, director from from uh, E2247, Director General of Gaza's Health Ministry, Munich Albrush, and his family was wounded by Israeli striking Jabalia. His daughter Jane was killed in the attack. Yeah, it, it's not sparing anybody. They're criminals. They're criminals. Michael Rennes says, Egberto, do you think the IDF have been ordered to leave no survivors? I've heard the heartbreaking incidents of IDF confrontations, beatings and shootings, but I think there are exceptions to the rule rather than the policy. Let, let's give an example. I want to give you a classic example. And everybody needs to look at this story. Look it up yourself. Three Israelis escaped from their captors. They are roaming the streets of Israel, I mean of Gaza. They need to find a way to get to their to the, the to, to the Israeli troops, to the idea. So they understand that they don't want to be clothed where it can seem like they may be they may be wearing bombs, you know, personal bombs, whatever you call it. Uh the the uh un be the, the human bombers. They don't want to appear that way. So they strip themselves down. They put a white flag up to say, hey, I'm surrendering and I'm Israeli. I'm surrendering. But they don't hear that the Israeli people didn't hear them speak in Hebrew. But, but the fact is, they are naked, not, not naked, but with very little clothes at, where you cannot hide any bombs or anything. And they're going to give themselves up to the IDF, the, in, it, the Israeli Defense Forces, with a white flag. And what did the Israeli Defense Forces do? They blew them up. They gunned them down. I, the reason I brought that up is what you said, Rodney. You said, I, 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 do you think IDF have been ordered to leave no survivors? I've been hearing, I've heard the heartbreaking incidents of IDF confrontations, beating and shootings. Yeah. When they meet anybody in the streets, they beat the crap out of them, whether they're women, men, no matter what, they beat you. But what I wanted to show you is even with a white flag, they assassinated the three Israeli because they thought they were Palestinians. Even if these three guys were Palestinians, the fact that they're stripped down with a white flag would have dictated that you don't kill them, that you go ahead and arrest them. But because of the mindset that they had, we were taking nobody alive. You come out, you're, uh, you're a guy, I don't, uh, we, we blow you to smithereens. And that's what they did. White flag, no clothes that could uh, hide any bombs, and you still get killed. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's see what else we got here. Um, Michael Rodney says, that video of the apartment building with black smoke coming out at the top, that's what they called a surgical strike. How many people were in the apartments at the time? It's infuriating that they don't care if they kill 100 to get one. And that's, and that's the point. What they said, oh, this was, a, this was a call. All right, who do I have the honor of speaking with? Okay, let's go ahead. I can't hear you. Go ahead and speak. And please turn down the radio because we have a slight delay. Yes, I'm here. It's Breach Red CP. Yeah, uh, who am I speaking to? Oh, Breach! How are you doing, and, sis? Yeah. Oh, my girl. Talk to me, my friend. And Talk to me. I just wanted to comment on something that Lee said. Yes. kind of got to me that he's right. He was right what he said, but he doesn't realize why. He said more people are becoming Hamas adjacent, meaning um, uh, Hamas apologetic and stuff like that. Oh, I took it as you don't realize that what Israeli is doing, genocide, what they're doing is making more terrorists. Yes. That's what they're doing. The same thing happened in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. When you're standing there and I see my three-year-old uh, cousin, niece, whatever, nephew, take poop of his diaper and throw it at a British tank. And the British soldiers got out of their tank and picked up a three-year-old and put him in the tank and took him away. He's three. 
but he's learning at three what everybody else is doing. Because there was no reason that they were there. They shouldn't be there. It's not their country, but whatever. It's it's a war. And Haley, anyway, um, so you're doing this, and besides all the atrocities that they're doing, they're just putting people in training to become terrorists because that's what they're growing up with for decades in a camp. And, and everyone keeps posting, have you ever been there? Have you been to Gaza? Have you been to the border? Have you been there? And, you know, I just Google everything that they say. And it's like, it's all this right, extreme right, right sites. They're just echo chambers for that. They just say what they say. Do they not have a decent thought for their own? Can you not think for yourself? Can, do you not have, not have any empathy? I mean, if, if, if another country came in to Texas and took two thirds of your state away and said, tough shit, what would you do? Exactly. The US military can't fight back. What would you do? So, you know, you can call and they keep saying you, you're siding with Hamas. And you're constantly not siding with Hamas. You're con- you're, no one is siding with a terrorist organization. No one. We're just being empathetic. If you kill one person and they go back and kill two people, okay. They killed 1,200 people and did what they did. Not good. Bad. But you don't kill 20,000 people. And no, Mike Z, Zach. Not, yeah, Mike Z. You're... you're, you're they weren't soldiers. Like, what is wrong with these people? What, what are they listening to? It's just so infuriating. You know, okay, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, let me let me just tell you because you are absolutely right, and that is re- you know when they tell when, when somebody like uh, anyone one in, in the chat that says, "Have you been there?" The truth of the matter, Bridge MCP, you and I can say yes, we've been there because we've lived under. Yeah what these powers do when they think of one group of people as less than the other and the atrocities that the so-called moral ones have effected onto people. America itself, our military has effected a lot of atrocities throughout Latin America, throughout South America. Unfortunately, because we have a lot, you know, when, when they, 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 a lot of these folks say, oh, you're an apologist for the terror. No. I mean, look, a lot of the bad things that are happening around the world, we are causal. And it starts with our corporation being causal for these things. The, 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 the immigration problem that we have, when we have some people talk about, we need to just shut the border down. No, what we need to do is shut down the abuse that we're doing behind, that we, our companies are doing behind the borders that are creating what's causing the influx to America. I mean, Right. What gets uh, what gets a lot of times is the the limited scope of the thinking ability of so many people who say the things that they say without trying to analyze the causality of things. They just look at what's open. You know, it's like having a scab on, and as opposed to they get taking the scab off and cleaning the infection, all you do is you keep wiping the scab, uh, just wiping the scab. It, it's it, it is something that but but here's the That's deal exactly it breach here's the deal and this is why i love you girl your story that you just told here while it may not work with some of our right wingers in the room that ha- that whose mind have completely gone awry or who chooses uh willful ignorance for the thousands of people that are going to hear your voice it makes a lot of difference and i want you to know that when no, you're celebrating your holidays so. and your frustration, I want you, Bridge MCP, and all you good thinkers, all you empathetic, moral people in this chat, I want you all to all know that we're going to continue doing this because we are reaching people. And when, when, uh, when, when Brother uh, Lee Grant says, uh, as time goes on, we get more Hamas adjacent. I get what you're saying, and he needs to understand what he's saying. As more people open their eyes, it's not that they get Hamas adjacent. It's that they get moral. They don't discount what Hamas has done. But what they've done 
is they no longer look at the immorality of what Israel and others are doing as something that we should support. Thank you, Bridge, as usual, for giving us that opportunity to expand even more, my dear. Anything okay, else you Merry want to Christmas, add? Everybody. Merry Christmas, my dear. Thank you so Merry kindly Christmas. for calling. Absolutely. All right. Mm-hmm. Bye. All right. Let, let's see here uh, from Tom Sarnik for CNN. The Supreme Court on Friday rejected a request by special counsel Jack Smith to fast track arguments on whether Donald Trump has any immunity from federal prosecution by alleged crimes he committed, which is in office, a move that will delay the trial. Another blow against democracy and the. Uh, Exactly, exactly. But I don't exactly know how to interpret it. I'm, I'm going to wait to see what people have to say about it. So anyway, Egberto, pardon the long one. I'll, I'll read it real quick. Uh, if you're counting one incident with three deaths, IDF say the soldiers were anticipating an ambush. I don't know if this incident counts as a pattern. However, this could be the same old. We investigated ourselves and we found no wrongdoing, which I'm pretty sure it is. How three Israeli hostages tried to save themselves only to be killed by their own military. Israeli troops were primed for an ambush, not the possibility of hostages right walking around behind enemy lines in Gaza. The hostages along Shamriz, Yolang Haim, and Samar Talik had emerged from different buildings, bare chested, and holding a makeshift white flag December 15, but they were shot dead by soldiers who thought they were walking into an ambush and hadn't accounted for the possibility that escape hostage could be moving again. Again, they had a white flag and they were walking with no clothes on. How do you ambush naked? I'm sorry, I don't buy it. I definitely don't buy it at all, at all. Egberto is very good at second guessing war. You bet your life I am because first of all, most wars shouldn't have occurred. All right, anyway, got to get out of here. Now we are at the end. Alistair Waters, how you doing, beautiful? Uh, Let's see, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Let's continue, I'm scrolling down. Okay, Alistair calling back. Yes, yes, Alistair, talk to me, my girl. Real quick about this whole with the Israeli prisoners that were murdered by their own. Yes. Israel Israel prides itself on their military. They pride they are so beyond boastful about how magnificent and trained and and disciplined their military is. And I tell you what, they're not. They murdered three of their own. They murdered three of their own. What kind of a disciplined military does that? You nailed it. You nailed it. I I, I don't even have to say more. You nailed it. And I want to answer one other thing about Colony Ridge. Colony Ridge uh, the person who runs Col- or built Colonel Ridge, uh, uh, a supporter of Greg Abbott. So I hope you're going to call Greg Abbott and say, why was he stealing from uh, these innocent uh, Latinos? Thank you very much. Hey, Alistair, thank you so kind of for calling. We got to get out of here now. Uh, folks, please support yes. the program. Merry Christmas, everybody. Mer- Merry Christmas, my dear lady. Merry Christmas to everybody on here. Let me go ahead and ask you to please support the program. Uh, you know, uh, you can support the program by going to politicsandright.com slash support, politicsandright.com slash su- support. That has all the different forms in which you can support us. Alternatively, please subscribe to our newsletter. It's free of charge, but if you can, uh, please become a paid subscriber, which gives you access to all of our books uh, that I've written five so far and three in the making. Thank you so kindly for being out here with us. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Oh. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.